supposed to stand on their shoulders. If they felt that it was worth dying for, then perhaps we ought to reevaluate our current stance. A guy was asking me the other night, a very good friend of mine who's been in the battle with me for quite a while now, and he said, John, why don't we have any great leaders anymore? Because we don't deserve them. Lord Bishop Cranmer said in the 13th century, it takes a strong people to maintain a good society. Only a weak people can begat an evil society. Lord Bishop Cranmer's voice, voice from the grave then stands as an indictment against every single one of us today. And everyone's talking about rights when in reality there's no person that I know of in this room who has any at least not according to the Constitution. You may have 14th Amendment rights, but those are all privileges granted by Congress. A privilege is something that can be granted and taken away at the whim of the grantor, you see. Now, how many citizens do we have here in, 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 in the place now? Oh, I love that. <laughs> you twit, shut up, this is my speech. <laughs> I'm supposed to make that distinction, all right? Well, now he's blown it. He's got the cat out of the bag. I know, coming to a preparedness expo, I should have known there might be at least one or two of them here. No, what this dude back here in the back is talking about is really very simple. When I came out and said good evening and greetings, to the resident alien subject slaves, I didn't intend it to be humorous because in point of fact, at law, you have no standing as a citizen of a state and you have certainly no standing at law as a citizen of the United States. You say, but how can that be? The answer is really very simple. If you have a contract with any form of civil government, it's an adhesion contract in which you give up, by implication, all constitutional protections. You change your status, give up your rights, and accept privileges, which the politician can give and take away from you. I had a friend of mine the other day, got burned by the IRS, and he says, John, what was I going to do? What was I going to do, man? These guys are beating down my door. They're threatening me and everything else. And just, you know, and my lawyer said, obey. Do what they tell me. That's the only way I can get out of it. I said, what privilege or benefit or immunity were you drawing that gave the IRS some kind of jurisdiction? And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. Then I said, you deserve to pay. And he said, all right, you explain it to me. And I said, you got a social security card in your pocket? And he said, yeah, everybody does. I, I don't. And he says, you don't? And I said, no. I'm not going to take any benefit, privilege, or opportunity from the government. And he says, you mean federal government? I said, no, the state government, or the federal government, or the county or the city government. He said, only if you do that do they have jurisdiction. Only if you do that do you give up your rights and accept and swap for privileges. And he says, yeah, right, I suppose you ain't got no driver's license either. And I said, wait a minute. As a matter of fact, I don't. And he says, wait a minute, wait a hold it, wait a hold it. And he jumps up off the couch and goes running outside and runs out to my truck, my van, you know, and 
Stooks bound behind it. He says, you ain't got no license plates on your truck, John. And I said, really? I, I didn't know that. And he ran up to the driver's side of the truck, and he looks in, you know, looking for the sun visor, and he's going to pull it down, you see, because that's where the registration is supposed to be. See, it's up there on the sun visor. He looks in there, and he... John, you, you didn't, your vehicle, it's not registered? And I said, no, I have quiet title on all my property. I'm a citizen of law. The God of Scripture is my authority. And he says, oh, come on, John, don't mix any of this religion in law. And I said, look, let me explain something to you. I said, now this is going to get a little philosophical, and I know you're a public school graduate. Have, uh, two years at <laughs> two years at UCLA, and <laughs> no comment. And two years at UCLA, and and thus there's a certain degree of intellectual. Uh, well, to be more genteel about it, he suffers from advanced epistemological myopia. <laughs> but anyway. I'll, I may explain that to you later. I love it. But anyway, uh, uh, he said, "He said, what, 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 are you, what are you trying to tell me, John?" And I said, "What I'm trying to tell you, partner, is that you've opted for benefits, privileges, and opportunities instead of rights that come from God, and that all law is religious. The only difference between systems of law." is the gods of the dominant religion wherein the law originated. Thus, any change in law is an express or an implied change in religion. All thought's religious. All thought creates its own system of law. And if it's illegal to murder on Monday and legal on Friday, then obviously we've got some kind of relativism here that kind of changes and shifts with the fluid with the time, you know, and everything else, but there's no fixed standard. So why even talk about law? Why even talk about rights? Well, I don't know why anyone else talks about law and rights and the Constitution, but I can give you my reasons. Because of guys like Randy Weaver. Because of friends of mine that came back in a body bag from Nam and never understood why they died. Because of those in at Iwo Jima, in the upper dense forest, the charge up San Juan Hill, at Gettysburg, and Valley Forge, and Plymouth Rock. This is the heritage and the tradition that we have been given, and in it was law the law of God, and we gave it up and sold our birthright for a mess of pottage. And if it continues, our children are not only already resident alien subject slaves, they will all grovel and have their property arbitrarily taken at the whim of any two-bit petty bureaucrat who can't decide which wrist he wants to inflect with, who can't decide which young child out there he wants as his personal plaything for a week or two. And a friend of mine one time got very hostile because he said, John, you're talking about imposing religion, Christianity, and law. You're supposed to render under Caesar the things that are Caesar and the things that are God to God. And I said, you're a little bit confused, my friend, because in this system, we are Caesar. The people are the supreme law of the land. 